keeps us here. Can't say. Desperate, degraded, ego inflated mind. Looking for something. Eat up your money and time See you can keep your Head up Without your spine Make a decision Give me some pockets to mine And I can't say what keeps us here. No, I can't say what keeps us here. Can't say why we're still here. Nothing but time But nothing comes to mind One day Someday It'll all be clear It's better than saying goodbye Let's look at the people Walking all lonely outside No good to you If I can't see with my own two eyes Walking in circles, blind, leading the blind. Well, what is true? What's true for you? What is real? Did you forget how to feel? None of it matters Your life is just scattered You bled like a pig And reality shattered Oh, I can't say Keeps us here I can't say
Friends, welcome to yet another episode of Backflash Fridays with the one and only Marcus Sawyer. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. That's a beautiful song, man. Thank we, you. I think we'll play one of your songs every time as people trickle in because it takes a few minutes for people to get the notifications and such. But that was going sure. clear. And we're going to be telling Marcus's story from um, from where we left off last time, which was part. Let me just show you guys real quick what we're doing today. So let's see. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Exactly. So is this thing on or what? OK, so on the home page here, days but not confused, you can find under podcast SPTV live. Um, that's not the correct one. Backflash Friday. So we've done all these episodes so far, and part one and two are right here. Part three was from Scientology staff to suppressive person, and part four is what we're doing today. And hopefully you guys have watched the previous ones because we're going to be picking it up from right where we left off at the infamous Melrose Mission. So Marcus, briefly, can you just tell us you started out in Louisiana, got on the Purif, and then you wound up to Ventura. Can you give us a brief summary that will bring us up to the building of this satanic mission right in the heart of melrose where you literally incarnated the devil and brought him into hollywood <laughs> is that so, too much too strong no, no i can summarize like uh, uh so we were in travis and i were in louisiana we did a purification rundown the reasons for that are in the previous video and yep. the story for that is in the previous videos uh we ended up in hattiesburg and we got recruited via uh, ventura through some people like Jim Hamry and uh, Iris Sandman and Monica Geller and Vicki Miller and Kathy Steiner and Tom Steiner and all that's in the previous videos as well as to how all that went down. And we took a friend with us to Ventura who ended up uh, leaving within a couple of weeks because it just, he was not going to stop taking his, his uh, psych drugs. And um, so he took a bus back home and the uh, training that we went through, uh, we, that we started with there, um, that led, uh, led us up to the point to where we're at Melrose. And we are uh, completed all the construction and, uh, and we are ready to open the mission and do the grand opening. Um, yeah. Um, that's where we left off really that's perfect so take it from there if you don't mind and also we're going to give a trigger warning when we get up to the point of how he got out because like a lot of scientology stories it often takes i call it a smash over the head marcus to get out but in your case it um some people have to get very close to death before they get out so we'll give a trigger warning before that but there's a happy ending as marcus takes off with all of his shit throws it in the car and the outro song, which is similar to the one that you heard at the beginning, will blend nicely into that as we end off on a positive note. A win, if you will. A floating needle. Yeah. Right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, earlier this week, I scanned a bunch of pictures and uh, sent them to Doug for, for this uh, broadcast. And these are pictures that I was able to take. Now, there's a lot that I, you know, you're too busy to take pictures. Literally, you're always yeah. moving particles in motion. So this yeah. is the three of us that ended up, uh, you know, going to California, to Ventura. On the far right is Travis. In the middle is myself. And to the left is our friend Jeremy Sullivan. And we were doing some photos, uh, thinking we were going to L.A. for some music, you know. Um, we, were, we, we had a friend take some photos of us, some whatever artsy photos where we climbed up underneath the 210 bridge. And yeah, also that's... some photos uh, of us sort of trying to look like we're floating on the water. But uh, that's a that picture is from after Scientology, but I included it. Uh, that's why you look so happy there? I mean, I was gigging. So, yeah, I guess I was happy. And all the girls were like on me. So not bad, happy. not bad. Um, so you go to the next one. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's more of these. And this these are cool. Who took these? Uh, my, okay. So my friend, that's a good question. My friend, Charlie Heinbach, uh, who is a guitarist that I Heinbach? knew. Heinbach? Did he Hein-Bach. have to go through his whole life with that name? Yeah. Sorry. All the that. way to the end. And there's another trigger warning there because he, 
uh, is no is no longer with us. Oh um, shit! I didn't know that, dude. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, but he he was a he was a wonderful guitarist and a great photographer, and uh, this was done with uh, a really nice little camera that he had. This was these were taken in in uh, two thousand or two thousand and one. So uh, let's see if there's another one. Uh, sure. That's this is all before i no, can there I we can, go yeah. yeah yeah there's one i love this one with travis so he's that's like travis? That's yeah cool. so he's like climbing what are you guys all, doing we're we're underneath this giant bridge and we're which is wow that's oddly symbolic we're underneath this giant oh, no bridge shit. wow um, dude. and we're scaling we scaled up that's he's we're actually almost 20 feet up right there Damn. it's probably 15 feet and you're the, still in the cold at this time no, no, this is before we went. Okay, okay. This is your journey is, there, so to speak? Like yeah. When you were taking photos on the way? Yes. Okay. Well, around that same around that same time. All right. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, so, that's that's the group that ended up at, at Ventura. Uh, yeah, that's me and Jeremy. And then More there's photos. Jeremy guys, like, and Oh, Travis. it is 20. You can see how high it up it is up here. Oh, Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's pretty high, dude. I remember trying to... We were like, well, how do we get down? <laughs> Damn, man. Fucking how did you get up? up? Well, we climbed up, but then we ended... I Look think at you, up, man, with the long hair and shit and the little sandals. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we hung and then dropped. And it was still wow. like a 10-foot drop. So it had to have been 15 feet or so. Um yeah those this were, is all before darkness all was about to descend on you right right and i and i just it's never thought about it the bridge that we're under the 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 just the sim, symbolic whatever yeah of it. totally and there's even a bridge behind you here dude yeah. it's like it was almost like you were being told not to proceed because <laughs> we talked <laughs> about this in the, in the previous evidence. interview there was some other shit happening that was kind of synchronistic too dude yeah right okay. i don't want to get to the photos that right right um, right that we don't need to yet yeah because <laughs> okay, these are all so, mission pictures okay so, so let's stop here real quick okay. these right okay. here back the i was told to go take pictures of these mm -hmm. vehicles mm -hmm. during my time at melrose and i don't know why and i was not allowed to ask why. really yes what and um so i did and uh and, and so that's what these pictures are i have no idea why but they asked me to get the VIN numbers, um, what, dude? And the pl and the plate numbers and and all of that. So um, I assumed that it was somebody who had, I don't know, either a suppressive a person a, or they yeah, right. Some or kind they were of doing FD. some car shady shit on the side. Well, this what is this is in the uh, the the alley on Melrose behind Melrose. So. Uh, this would be the back of a business. This would be a business, and uh, maybe the business owner was being antagonistic towards. Yeah, toward, I'm sure that's what it was. This so, is what, yeah, uh, I took all these photos for that, and then I had them developed and gave them to uh, the ED, which was Chris Baumgartner. Uh, excuse me, and that's nice. an open mic night. Okay, here's open mic nights. Well, before um, we get to Melrose, before we get to Melrose, can you lead us up to? before we get into these pictures or whatever so yeah right you were so, grand building. opening well even before the grand opening what about building. talking about building this satanic temple in the middle of Melrose? <laughs> again too much <laughs> no but tell that dude because that was a that was a hell story in itself so it took six months right and so what was the first day like and, and why were you even told to go out there by the mission staff to do this fucking thing could you explain that to people well uh we were we from what from what i remember and 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 when travis will be coming on the uh on the program yeah it's gonna uh, be awesome so you'll get some other perspective there too which is going to be really helpful filling in some of the blanks because there's so much information crammed in your face daily but mm -hmm. uh yeah the uh the after training and after doing some hatting, which is different than training, like hatting is actually on the job experience is mm -hmm. essentially what it is. And uh, doing calls, we had a big long list of OTs Call calls to reg, which means raise money for and do for donations to build the mission. Um, towards uh, like I, I stayed and I regged and I did pretty well as a reg um and 
And so whenever John Jones, who is in one of these photos, we'll see later, uh, he is a, a electrician. He was a, a licensed state electrician and also a general contractor. I remember him. So he was uh, going to work at Melrose and volunteer. And so Tom and Kathy were like, well, look, you're going to be in charge of the renos. You're the reno IC. That means renovations. Yeah. And, and, and IC means in charge. So he was in charge of the renovations. And uh, uh, when we did that little meetup downtown, uh, down in Melrose with Hal and uh, mm -hmm. Rachel, she talked Patrick, about last time, right? Patrick um, Renna. Tell some of the names. Do we know these people? But the people listening don't know. So okay. when you say these so people, Lightfield, yeah. Lightfield Lewis, which is Juliet Lewis's brother, Patrick Renna. Uh, he would be best known for the Sandlot. Do you guys remember the Sandlot with that rowdy kid? And how would the, you describe the, Patrick Renna? The red Patrick hair? Renna was the was he, the fat kid. And and there you uh, go. I mean, yeah, he's good too. Yeah, and uh, so Rachel Miner, which was uh, she best known for bully. She no, wasn't Paul. a superstar, but she married a superstar. Macaulay Culkin. Uh, right. And um, and when when I met her, they had already been divorced. Oh, Hal wow. Ozan, who was a, an up-and-coming guy who was on Dawson's Creek regular. Mm -hmm. um, that was his big gig. Who else? Oh, Jessica Sterling, who was a photographer. Sterling management. Yeah. Um, Big-time Scientology or third, family. Second or third generation. I can't yep. remember. And uh, she was doing tons of photography and, and design stuff, uh, recommendations. She wasn't asked to do that, but she was she felt she felt connected to the Melrose mission and wanted to have some some say on stuff. She got shut down a lot. But uh, yeah. um, who else? Um, Lindy, Lindsay Bartleson. Lindsay Bartleson who was at that time well known for a uh, series serialized on uh, for grounded for life, grounded for life, which was a, a serialized show. Um, and uh, she was probably the, the low key, but biggest, you know, kind of mm -hmm. money making person in the group. Um, the Mastersons. No, no Mastersons. There was, I think, one of the Rabisis one time at one of these little get-togethers. That would but, be Giovanni Rabisi and Marissa Rabisi, best known for days. Isn't there is a brother? Confused, huh? Another, no, the, doesn't Giovanni have a brother, or is it a sister? Um, no, you're you're probably thinking of playing them playing brothers and sisters when Giovanni and Juliette Lewis played retards in that movie. You remember? Oh, Is that what you're okay. thinking of? No. But no, her sis hit, Giovanni Rabisi, Gay Rabisi is the mother. She's also an acting manager, and then Marissa Mar Rabisi, who's best known for being hit on by Matthew McConaughey and Dazed and Confused. Oh, the red-haired chick. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, barely even remember that. She's girl. kind of a C-level actor. For, yeah. forget forgettable but she's good in that movie man. um another person that later was uh clementine ford um we had a guy named marcus coloma but oh, i but remember him yeah. basically like from from those initial meetings like me and hal hit it off actually pretty well he was a guitarist he played his song earth man which is amazing which i wish i could play but there would definitely be a copyright issue with that it's a beautiful song um it's actually one of my favorite songs that i know that someone wrote earth man it's, it's so great but um they removed for some reason it's all pulled from the internet now um and it was up just a year ago so i don't know what's up with hal's management and catalog but uh, uh hal and i got along pretty good immediately he liked the he liked my guitar playing um I was an advanced guitar player for my age, I guess. And, um, and, and people would just be like, uh, cause I, I would do Reggie Wooten stuff, um, or Victor Wooten type stuff, um, which, which means I'm playing with both of my hands and not like a, traditionally with my fingers, I'm playing, I'm tapping with both hands on the neck of the guitar. And I had a couple of pieces that I played, um, that, and how was just like, what, uh fuck they were just you know impressed he was he was probably more impressed 
than anyone else but it, it uh yeah we, we 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 instantly had a connection and um and and he was willing to you know hang out and talk whatever uh and he was sort of what they call in the in the community an opinion leader in that group are so, these all the people that you met that first night when no no of I'm, most of them most of them are but uh like marcus coloma came later uh, mm -hmm. clementine ford came later uh rachel weston came later um and uh others but yeah the the ones that were there and patrick renner wasn't there but it was it was how rachel uh Lightfield, Jessica Sterling, uh, Rachel's PA. Uh, she asked me not to say her name ever, so I won't say it. Um, and Aaron Larson, and um, who is not a star, but like is 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 a super rich Scientologist. So he hangs out with the. He used to hang out with the Mastersons and stuff. Did you ever meet Aaron Larson? No, I didn't. Even, I've never even heard of him okay he was like a dj and he would dj parties and stuff and uh, yeah he was probably more uh like i wouldn't be surprised he was at one of them donkey punch parties like i did go to, did you go to those i mean no. you had to you didn't to mm -hmm. you didn't have to go to those to reg i went to a few no. of those they were very dark not that i'm aware of i mean there you know, may have been one but you know I, what i, I remember marcus they used to have a fight club outside of danny's little donkey punch shit where two idiots this is right when the movie fight club had come out and um i remember going to one of his he always had him on the same place on the corner of like hollywood boulevard or someplace i don't remember what it was but he had it in the same place on hollywood or sunset mm. and there was um people that would do fight club because it was like the thing so two guys would go beat the shit out of each other really? you know come back with like they look all fucked up man we come outside the party like laughing and shit and i'm like aren't you guys scientologists supposed to be keeping your ethics in we gotta yeah. say cupboard on on, on them that is very out ethics, seriously. Dude, that's what I'm saying. The whole Masterson little <laughs> click or whatever, they would um Oh god. They yeah. would do they'd smoke pot, do all kinds of things that to me as a Scientologist, like I said, the fight club shit and be fucking everybody be fucking everybody else. And it's like I couldn't I couldn't believe you know what I'm talking about? They're kind of bragging yeah. that that oh, they, oh, they get away yeah. with everything and they're not really they're Scientologists. I wrote a bone. KR on somebody. Uh, really? At a, from yeah, because I rode with my uh, then Scientologist girlfriend to a shrine or event, and her friends were the ones driving, and I was like, want to jump out of the car because they were driving on the LA 101 and shit like bats out of hell, and and even in the parking garage in the shrine auditorium, so they were just. <laughs> I'm like, what in the? I wrote a freaking KR on them and sent it to RTC, and they did get in trouble, which is funny because they must have been somebody, somebody rich's kids. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, so, what talk about? I mean, you're living on the freaking balcony, were you not? Like when you were building this freaking thing while you're interviewing yeah, with celebrities and trying not to look like a slob. Yeah, right? it was a couple of months, few months, maybe four, maybe six. I can't really remember because we were working so much. But we slept on these uh, bags of insulation out on the balcony. Lovely. And no one, you know, it's L.A. No one's like, they're like, they're not hurting nobody. They're it's totally against building. the building orders, though. I mean, you see CR yeah. members working all yeah. over the place. It's against code. It's, yeah, it's against code. And um, so what we would do is just sort of lean the uh, stuff against the the sliding doors so that we weren't seen as much yeah he, he had one side and i had the other and every morning when the cars would start really going we'd be like uh oh get my up God. Fucking hammer nails and run that conduit. sounds like a nightmare dude it yeah and like and during that time i'm also supposed to be regging the the wow. the, the, the field that making is, phone uh, calls and shit too dude mostly uh uh, mostly like going to CC, going to AO, going to ASHO, going mm -hmm. to PAC base, going to anywhere that's a Scientology place where everything can be sort of like under control. Mm -hmm. um, and what would you do? What would you say? And who would you try to contact? How did, what would you do there? If you went to CC, for example, if I went to CC, I would go and uh, uh, get some, usually if I, I, I would, I would have some money. So 
somehow. I got forty dollars, whatever. I go buy a three dollar fucking bagel or some shit <laughs> and a coffee and uh sit and just sort of um watch people and see like a... <laughs> well i wanted to know who and this was sort of part of what you know i was not directly told but indirectly told through references <laughs> and like basically you want to go to where you're it's almost like a hunting ground you, you sound like go... a predator is what you're describing yeah. dude yeah, you didn't even have a target predator. or like no. a certain person to talk to you were just going no. as a to find out who to pounce on maybe yeah you what? find out yeah because you find out their course schedule yeah Jesus, and you're like a stalker yeah yeah you're stalking and um and then you and then you find a way to organically interact with that person you see wow really this was like your battle plan that you were given by vicky or jim to just i mean you jim had... jim for sure jim was the one wow. who was like you know it's weird he, he was know? like he, well i was under pressure to get stuff like products right which means people in the door or peep services sold whatever but Jim was like, don't worry about that. Just focus on uh, who you can develop a relationship with. Really? And this was something that was allowed to be over time, so you didn't have to get a product that day? Were you planting seeds and trying to get, is yeah. this how he yeah, yeah, yeah. with that's the celebrities how, and shit? That's, that's how we ended up getting uh, most of the uh, celebrities into wow. Melrose that were Can you give there. me an example, Marcus, of how after x amount of weeks or days or whatever you slid into making a sale and, and getting buddy buddy with these people at cc so yeah probably a good one would be prior to the grand opening uh we want kathy and tom uh, and obviously everyone else wanted as many celebrities there as possible of course so um everyone you know everyone that kathy could tap to do that she did and um that includes rachel and, and and hal and Lindsay and and all that but sometimes they didn't respond to her to kathy right and that's or where you any... you and travis kick in right i think so yeah because and 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 because with me and travis you know normally in any other situation we'd be like close and talking all the time but mm -hmm. in this situation we're kind of like on our own paths but in the same space so Jesus, so that's dude. why you know hearing his perspective is gonna is gonna be wild probably different than mine um, by the way can i interject marcus real quick if yeah. you guys are um just joining us this is um see i had this all queued up marcus ready to go but i just fucked it up <laughs> this is Transition. backflash friday yeah. and we did, fuck yeah and we do have his brother coming on um, probably in a couple of weeks, and he's going to share his whole story. And then we're going to have both of them on at the same time. And it's going to be interesting to hear their different perspectives, because even though you guys were in the same journey, you both have different opinions paths. about what. Went well, down and we were, like I said, we were on different paths. He was a BSO. Mm -hmm. I'm an FSM. Sometimes it'd be like, you're going to go FSM with him. Sometimes I'm. they're like, you're going to sell books with him. Sometimes they're like, y'all are going to go out on the street and do Div 6 body routing. You know, just multiple hats multiple hats yeah and whatever uh, need to be done yep because it was a small small group um so how would you the, get in with these people man right right so the so the best example probably is prior to the mission opening and they wanted to have celebrities and i had uh been talking jim had told me make friends with john rig at cc he gives you specific names yeah make friends with john rig he's the bso there and um that's a bookstore and, officer right bookstore officer so the bookstore office in cc is a very tiny little that. thing yeah, and there's a is. bookcase in the middle so it's like when you walk in it's there's the desk and john's just standing yeah. right there yeah i know who you're talking about and uh Shit. he's a little bald on the top it's a really nice guy honestly mm -hmm. i love john um yeah and uh and I would just go in there and we'd talk about, you know, different lectures and I would pretend like I had money to buy this shit. Then, you know? <laughs> oh my and, God, um, dude. So, um, yeah. And, but he knew I worked at Melrose and, I, and, and all of that. So like when that happened, he's like, you know, he'd give me discounts on, on shit or whatever, if I wanted anything. Yeah. But, but you rarely, didn't have, money didn't to have buy any, anything. rarely did I have any money to buy anything. Um, I, but I, 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 dropped off the flyer uh 
some of the fly we had flyers different all throughout different points of the things like you know here call this number to don't donate money to melrose or when it finally came to the grand opening i had a flyer and i had been hanging out occasionally at cc um but i was going on course at pack base like i said before because that's where the real scientology is not the not the pansy shit at cc and um but i would go to cc and that was sort of like my hunting ground and wow. uh uh, and I made friends with John there and also, uh, you know, uh, met and, and would talk with Lindsay and, and other people that were at that initial meeting at Melrose who went to course at CC. And uh, so the idea was to get the people who were on course at CC, who were celebrities, who were part of the Melrose project to get their friends into the Melrose mission. Um and then like maybe a company and twin with them at Melrose and then ultimately get them to CC because it was a CC project. It was I a, see. some kind of special project. Kathy lined up with the DSA and which is What's the, director, the DSA? director of special affairs. So whatever the frick that means. Yeah. Thank um, God we forgot. Yeah. So uh, I had this flyer for the grand opening and uh, we, I knew Lightfield and I talked to Lightfield and I'd asked Lightfield, like, hey man, uh, are you coming to grand opening? Bring your well, sis. I, well, I asked him if he was coming, and and he knew why I was asking. Of him. course, everybody <laughs> asked him because they want to get to Juliet. But here's the thing, I actually wanted to know if he was coming. Why? I, I well, like because because if he was coming, then that means Juliet might be coming. <laughs> That poor guy, yeah. Marcus. He was cool, man. But he was like a he was a homeless he, guy, just shit, barely getting by in life. Oh, he, he had his rich family, ass. and G he, he hated, hated you or he hated his family. Oh god, he hated he hated me. I don't think he god. liked his family either. Too. He was felt. so down tone to me. He didn't like me. He didn't really like anybody. My he was a, he was a complicated character. Definitely. So he kind of shut me down and um because he knew you like, wanted to get in to a hard way. Oh yeah, in a very, very direct and hard way. He never really spoke to me again. So yeah. um <laughs> I but <laughs> uh, that red he was cycle very turned off well. because I went I went tone 48C on him and I he's see. like fuck you. Yeah. I, fuck he, you. I can I can't see that. It. He's a very can't reactive person. <laughs> so I went oh, to John Rigg God. and I was like, look, man. Um, I know Juliet's on course here, whatever schedule I had, you know, I, I would watch her walk out, you know, so I knew she was on course on whatever day it was. And I, and I asked John, I was like, does she ever come in here or what course is she doing next? Whatever. He's like, well, she is doing, um, uh, the PTSSP again. So like, um, you can come in and he was like, I'll see when she's supposed to start. And I can't promise you anything. But I came came back, and he said, "Okay, it's going to be this time, this day." Really, the bookstore officer would give you the intel, the on time and the day. Shit, man! Because well, with, the, I... with with people like Juliet, they schedule, they clear the room so that they can go in. Like people right. like, John and they have or... a special place usually to go to too. Like on the I'm fourth sure. floor, right, Marcus? Well, I know they did because I went to the celebrity crap a couple of times, and I'm they sure, do have a floor yeah. for the more elite. I'm sure, yeah, but uh, she was there just getting basic materials, so it was the you know bookstore. I so I I showed up. Wow! And I she just happened to be, when she was there. Yeah, yeah, because Holy he. Shit. I mean, he told me what time she would be there, and he was certain. He was like, "She will be here at this time, on this day. So if you're here at this time on this day, you will be able to have a comp cycle with her." There's something wrong with that man. That's and, uh, so sneaky. Yeah, and I, oh, I, it was like, man, what a what a heart pounding experience. I never really got starstruck. You did with her though, didn't you? Never. The only person, only I person understand. I've ever been starstruck by. Because of what specifically, Marcus? Did you, a certain movie or Gilbert you just... Grape? I mean, Natural Born that Killers. One? Gilbert Grape? Didn't she play? Oh no, she didn't. She wasn't retarded. That was Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. Yeah. There's plenty of Stop better movies. Stop retarded. You retarded. I know. God, that's I, we so to, disrespectful. You I knew you were going to. It, what, it wasn't when I grew up in the 80s, but now you have to watch every stupid word you say, and I, I just yeah. refuse to, to do that, actually. Good. Fuck, sorry, man. Good. Yeah, fuck it, dude. You know what? Yeah. Fuck it. Exactly. Fuck it, dude. Let's go bowling. Yeah. 
So I, I, I open the door and and uh, I see John Rigg just like normal. And I'm like, fuck, where's she at? And he's like, you know, giving me the nudge like she's in the other aisle. Oh and then God. I feel like I'm it's like, so do, creepy. I walk, do I walk forward or do I go to the left and come around the side and not and try? I don't want to surprise her and freak her out, you know, because, <laughs> so you know, funny, dude. Yeah. So I ended up walking straight and and which was awkward because john was like <laughs> you know over there he didn't say you know anything no one was supposed to be in there and uh so i but i walked right by him so that he probably was like you're, you're just pretending idiot. to like look at the books like you fucking idiot oh right? julia what's up yeah. yeah yes actually so i walked around oh. the corner did you have a she... battle plan marcus on what to say to her did you know what you were gonna freaking say and yeah, trying to sell her on what's that um, nasty shit you're eating is that what is that oh this is just nicotine salt is it chew no it's just nicotine and salt form okay. in a pack in a little I'm pouch i know what that is anyways <clears throat> so you nicotine. creep up on her like a predator and you're sweating and, <laughs> and you have your shirt down well like i wasn't no, right I, actually i was pretty cool up until i saw her because she was, okay. her back was turned to me when I turned around the bookcase. Her back was turned to me. And so, like, I did, for some reason, I was like, is it Juliet? But I mean, John had been giving me the, like, it's Juliet. So um, I walk up to her and I just tap her on the shoulder. You and, tapped her on the shoulder, you idiot. Like, like this, <laughs> like this. I tapped her on the shoulder. It's like the worst thing you could do. And she turned around and she was like, "Oh, hey, all right, hey, like, hey. like she talks, you yeah. know, in, in yeah, the yeah. movies." Talking and I'm shit. just like, uh, "Oh my god, uh, were you able to keep it down? You know, down there? Uh, uh, no, it wasn't down there. It was in my the heart. My oh my, uh, uh, really? That's what I would describe. And and I was she was, and she looked at me with such like compassion and like." Like, she's oh, been you there, poor little that. thing, you poor thing. She's like, it's okay, it's okay, you can talk to me. <laughs> and I'm like, I have this flyer, and I'm supposed to invite you. And she takes the flyer, and she's like, she looks at it, and she's like, oh, yeah, I was planning on coming to this. Oh, and I said, yeah. I was like, awesome, cool, well, uh, thank you that's all i have to say Goodbye. yeah yeah i was like thank you we'll see you there and she was like see you there and wow. um very good she marcus. actually yeah well that's she came and toured it she came and toured it like not long after that but i was instructed by tom and kathy they got a phone call anytime a big celebrity would mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. and everyone you had to do a white glove and clean everything right. and make sure everything is perfect yeah and uh only upstat staff members or staff members or staff members around. under really high control yeah. could be around them yeah. so i was locked in the fucking my my office i wasn't locked in there they didn't lock me in there but they said don't come out how come you didn't have the status at that point to kind of mingle were you not up to status with dealing with the celebrities in general at this point or had you done something wrong oh, with no, juliet no, or no, something no 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 wait from from my experience now uh, you know working in entertainment i know that i get along pretty damn good with most celebrities yeah clearly you handled that thing with juliet myself. tapped her on the shoulder now let's not get carried away here yeah no in my hometown yeah all right all right by the way balake said what's up beautiful balake. what's up, up balake you, you want to go, go to war, war balake? Balake? yeah hell yeah <laughs> all right uh, yeah, so uh, she came in toward the mission, and I remember being at my desk and just like having my head down on my desk. Like, what am I supposed to do? I was given no instructions. Uh, this is rare, like where you just are told to just not do anything. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I'm like, it's, it's just a. Uh, is this during a, an event, Marcus, or is this when where this are we was at before here? the before the mission opened? There were several celebrities that toured it. it I okay, know the tour that she did, and also Beck did. Now I did get to meet Beck when he came in, nice. um, because was Tom it? was the only one there, and Tom likes me, and he's like, you know, he, he didn't Beck. he didn't seclude me, and we were. Uh, he was giving Beck the tour, showed him the auditing rooms, and then when he came back around my office, I just 
walked out and introduced myself. Hi. Uh, and and he was sh- exactly as I would expect. He was weird as hell. Yeah, he was, I could definitely he, see he that. He barely Did- made eye contact and he was like, yeah, oh, hi. You know what might have worked with him if you would have applied it to Juliet too, like Lafayette says, just just give her a shove in the back, you know, rather than just the tap. Is that the way we do it? <laughs> Beck probably would have went into like some seizure or something. Yeah, so he's this timid little. Yeah, very timid. Yeah, um, and um, I'm not even sure like if if it was more of maybe he was paid to go check it out because that's the vibe I got. Because it didn't really seem like he was that interested uh, in Melrose. Um, Juliet did, but uh, I don't think Beck was like you know I've heard him pre- you know proclaim Scientology on shows and everything, but he you know he since left and he just scooted out you know slowly. Has he? But left? I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's ever oh. was a real hardcore. Sci- yeah, that's good. But man, someone like him should speak out because a celebrity like yeah, him like Jason just, Lee as well. Fucking I know. Jason Lee, man. He thinks he like, can just literally skate away. You know? Yeah. Well, you know. By the way, uh, when he left and he went into that town, they thought that he was still a Scientologist. Yeah, he, he had to, had to make it, a yeah, public announcement. Little, exactly. I but that, that's all he did, though. Think about what he could do if Jason Lee said it's a criminal cult, and you know, here's what's going on. Same thing with um, Tom Cruise's wife. I mean, think of the intel she would have. Yeah, but at that point, this is like sealed records now. With, with I know. Her. They definitely had a, an NDA. They had her sign an NDA. They, well, there's a thing called a sealed record, I think. Maybe maybe really? uh, Cynthia could know something about that. She's in the chat, Finn Mort. Just don't bring uh, up Monica. Otherwise, we won't get Cynthia on board. Right. You already slipped her, her name once. Where's, where's the titty emotes? We need them. Um, just gave the secret away. We're going to lead up to Monica. Give me a gold medal for that, man. Give me the oh, gold. hell yeah. All right. I'm a little slow on these things, but okay. that definitely deserves a gold medal. Anytime, <laughs> anytime you everybody take a drink every time you hear the word Monica. <laughs> yeah. So that was an example of, uh, you know, one one instance where, you know, how you, you know, how one would go about it. It's a real, like you said, it's a very stalkery type of thing. Like, you think? Uh, and and hey and, Juliet, how you doing? <laughs> Didn't know I'd be here, did you? Thought you were gonna be alone. What do you mean it's stuck? Is that literally how you would get the quote unquote calm lines with these people? And that was yeah, Kathy I would go to Steiner's I would, battle plan and Jim's battle plan, Jim, just predator yeah. these people. Yeah, just watch them and and uh and go to CC and hang out when that's you know. so weird. I had no idea, Marcus. I thought you had a much more a better a better plan. Like just go to CC and hang out. Well, and make then, it go so, right. Well, that that led to some things, though. That led to some parties, like uh, mm-hmm. fundraiser parties, um, for that, the uh, mission itself. For the mission itself, that was done on Laurel Canyon at Mike Tyson's right. old house. Right. right. Um, and uh, so, like that was before the mission was open, and there were a ton of celebrities there. I couldn't even tell you who all was there. It was like hundreds of people, at least two, three hundred people. And how did you get like, those people? Celebs. Those were uh, like the field, like so. It was like the the. I think that Tom, it's possible that Tom and Kathy or someone, some terminal person at Celebrity Center, um, was able to sort of like I don't know, like not like a PTA meeting, but basically like, hey, if you're a kid in Scientology, second gen or whatever, like it's something to do like that's church related. And it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, if you're a teenager in Scientology, you don't want to be out. You don't want to be dealing with ethics all the time. Um, it's not necessarily your money that you're going to be donating. It's your parents' money. But they do know they're going to be donating. Just wanted yeah. to point out that every time we're summoned to these meetings, we always know we're going to be donating. So that's why it's hard to get people to keep coming to these things, right? Because they know right. they're going to be hit up for money. Yeah, we had that one big one, and and we got I can't remember how much we got. Monica was like tearing it, tearing ass with the she got fourteen thousand dollars in an hour or some shit. When you say tearing ass, do you mean literally? Uh, because she's pretty smoking, so she was using her body to uh, get get rewards. Or you're talking about straight TRs? Oh no, she wouldn't know. She wouldn't. I'm just with no joking, money. but she could have, man. And I'm surprised Scientology didn't put her up to that. They're, they'll, you know, they, they had use her so, iris to get my ass in there. They had Monica so fucked up in the head, man. I know, dude. Like she couldn't even. She couldn't. Yeah. 
I don't think she could allow herself to even have sex. I know. I know. So, um, and I was, I know. And by the way, he said, he said, Monica thing. must take a drink in her name. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to have sex at the church. All right. Please continue. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, um, the, the event there went pretty well. I never really got the numbers. All that went back to Ventura. All the money went back to Ventura and was managed from Ventura. For seemed. Melrose. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because Ventura was the mission. The Kathy and Tom were the mission holders that were starting it. So, like, it went. The money went to their mission that was already open. Yeah, and um, there was a big rush before two thousand and uh, before it was. We wanted to get it done in that year. So um, two thousand and what? Do you remember? Two thousand and three. Okay. I think it was 2003 where Melrose opened and we opened, you know, just in the nick of time. And we had to, I remember, I remember what I do remember is having to work so much to get everything done so that we could go home for Christmas. Um, and uh, just showing some pictures of Melrose. While you that talk. was an important, uh, yeah. The, you go the, there you go. There's well, I think Don that <laughs> who's that? That the uh, one with the dude with the ash trail on his head. That's Dominic. That's the guy that I almost threw through the door. Oh, that's a guy. I thought that was a chick. That's the infamous Dominic, bro. Yep, that's okay. Him. I definitely did not know that guy. What's that on his head? An ashtray? An ashtray. He looks like a psychopath. Dude, look at those eyes. I mean, that's just maybe just just the picture. Yeah, that, that girl. Dominic. That girl in the mm -hmm. red. The blonde chick. Yeah. So that blonde chick she was my uh highest ranking terminal as she was the fsm ic and some other stuff fsm for ao and asho so she had access to everything at cc everything at pack base everything at ao and everything at asho um and so if i needed like i could i could call her and, and 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 straight up ask her like hey i need to get i'm at melrose i'm the fsm here i need some celebrities to get in can you can you point me in the right direction where i need to be at what time um and so she was a resource that i used in addition to just hanging out at cc when i had the time and that was set up by one of the executives probably vicky uh to 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 ex expedite more celebrities quicker because you know me just going to cc and hanging out yeah that's fine and i was able to get juliet like to come to the event but um and that's a picture from the event those guys drinking and the dude flipping us off that's that guy's name is dietrich i think those who's the who's the girl that's turning away i is that one of the celebrities no you tried idea. to uh, talk to Probably did, you a celebrity. did you tap her on the shoulder too? Is that why she turned away? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know any of these guys. Don't be an ass show. I like that. That's, That's uh funny. go back, go back yeah. one. It's that a cool was photo. uh yeah. Is that, that you or Travis? No, not that one. One before. Okay. Who is that though, by the way? That's Jeremy. That's the guy that left. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. This one? And this one. So that's Melrose and Fairfax at sunset. Oh. That's and uh, me and way. Travis spent a lot of time there when we were uh, working at the internet cafe. Is Melrose over here, bro, on the right? That is Melrose, like right here. It, yeah, this is the mission right here. This no, uh -uh, yeah. no, okay. that's a block away from the mission. The, the school it. was two blocks from the mission. So this is what you'd see every night while you're walking up and down with a Dianetics book and or being a predator trying to sell the David Spade and, and company. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ, yes. dude. <laughs> yeah man this dominic think... guy creeps me the fuck out brother what's going on with those well, eyeballs this is the guy that would that smack something? you around whenever you didn't well we're gonna no, get up to him no, no 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 he never smacked me no i'm oh. the one that almost, that's the guy almost threw through the door at the first course oh, room no shit that's yes. dominic the that's guy dominic. You almost really and that's hal right there wait 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 can we back yeah. up one second what was yeah. the name of the guy that would smack you around and kind of like your john senior? jones okay Okay. There's a picture should be in here somewhere of him of and John? Gar. Yeah, him and okay. Gar. What's uh, this though, man? Is this the grand opening? So this opening? is from the grand opening, and this was the stage in the back, and oh, uh, me, me and Hal were setting up and and doing sound for. Is this Hal right here? 
that's Al. Yep. Yeah. And there's another picture uh, where Rachel turned her head somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. It's, yeah. It wouldn't be there. You got Rachel on here? Yeah, somewhere. Stand by. I can't get over that. <laughs> that was the guy you almost threw through the door. Wow. Jeremy. Is that you, by the way? Yeah, that's me in 2000. So that's another wow. picture of before. Before you got into the Look at how yep. different and happy you look, man. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. I mean, you look good today, too, man. I'm just saying you can tell that it's almost like you can tell it's a pre-cult picture. That's yeah. you, too. Look at how no, you that's look. that's not me. That's it's Jeremy attractive. Sullivan. Okay. Yeah. You, all look, you all look very similar, bro. All yeah. three of you. That's is this your my... was this your boyfriend at the time? Yeah, yeah. We used to uh we used to do all kind of homo stuff behind in the alley. I know, but thank God they didn't come up in session. Who is that, man? Uh that's my friend Jim Edwards um, from high school, and he was coming down from Sacramento, moving back to Lake Charles, and he stopped in and visited at when I was working at Cyberdog with Travis. So this is when you're in the cult. I was doing my sec check. And you got blonde hair too to look hip and trendy to uh, work with the celebs, right? Because normally, well, no, be that was to... from the band, the band thing. When Travis oh. came back, we had a, a contract, a speculative deal with EMI, and they let you moonlight, right? Yeah, that's not that, Rachel. No, that's Katie. That's John's current wife, John John. Oh, really? Wife. She became she joined H... staff for a while. Yeah, she was she... on HCO for uh, Ventura. Okay, I I didn't know her. These were right mm -hmm. after me. And that's my friend uh, uh, who's now a PhD in psychology. Her name is nice. Anna. She's uh, her and Travis and I are real good friends. And awesome. she's from Germany, from Jena. And uh, she would call me and say, Marcus, come fix my computer. And she would was push that her code for together. And she would just like, mm. And and um, yeah, like she had no uh, aversions to like you know using her feminine wiles. The old um, fix my computer line. <laughs> yeah. Yes, here's and where you're stalking cars, where you're yep. doing something completely criminal. Yeah, well, pretending to catch criminals. Who's that on stage? That guy is uh, was a regular at the Melrose Mission open mic. I can't remember his name. Scientologist. Nope, non Scientologist from Georgia, and he would come and play really awesome blues. And you guys just would kind of have him be around just to attract people because he was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was absolutely fantastic guitarist and and performer. Did you guys guy. pay him since he wasn't a cult member? Hell no. Really? Okay. No, it was open mic, and that's my ex wife, and oh, that's a picture that I yeah. took when I was returning a wow. sweater to her because uh, I was a creepy, freaky Scientologist and like. You know, here you go. She's like, she "What are you doing, with honey?" Me for no reason um, for being a Scientologist. No, no. That that actually, like I've said before, she actually wanted me to go back to Scientology before we That's finally right. got divorced. Yeah, she but was. She, wasn't, she was more she comfortable with me being a Scientologist. Yeah, because she was kind of a manipulative person, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. She well, I mean, she. I had, don't know. She's really manipulative. She can be, but you know, it's a it's complicated she had a, a difficult childhood and she also is on the high on the spectrum and she doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of empathy so like whenever i changed because there's that changing whenever you leave and you start to shed all of this stuff and you're like just feels like you're unloading all kind of crap that you, you don't believe anymore and you start to change your mind about things um you change as a person and and she didn't like any of that she just wanted me to be like stone I know, cold she, Scientologist. Yeah, so she could have you in control, basically. Your girlfriend, she she wants you to try the old computer thing at the house. Maybe you guys can role play that. Scott shit. Travis remembered the guy's name, the uh, guitarist. Oh. His name was Scott. Thank you, Travis. Good memory. Awesome. Marcus, not as pretty as your oh, current wife. Oh, Uma. I agree. Thank you. Did you I hear agree. that? Yes. You, yes, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> look, at, look at the love on SPTV Live. So, yeah, there's another uh, performance. That's uh, in the Melrose Mission, right? And I think I'm the one performing in this. It's just I'm way back. Uh, you see, I have a packed house here. Is that? Uh, no, I mean, but you're you're being, you're being telling the truth because it only fits like 20 people, right? Yeah. I think yeah. we can see that in other photos. But this is a packed house. And are yeah. these Scientologists or people off the street yeah. that you would well, grab? Some, some, it's mixed. And you people would come. I see. 
People would actually come and check Off out the what street was going. and yeah. shit. Yeah. Because they could hear the music and stuff. Yep. And obviously that was what you were trying to do. Would that's you take all exactly the people right. after this? And how would you sneakily get them? So, into okay, that's a do? great thing. It's a great thing to ask because that was like, Mitch, that was sort of like a critical point of what my role was and what Travis's role was. Said doing these open mic nights and attracting people in is what do you do after? And um, you hang out. You have a nice... Posh have a cigarette with space them. yeah you go on the balcony have cigarettes you have wow, a conversation you, you talk are... about philosophy really? you talk about religious shit you talk about aliens you talk about whatever you want but oh then you get God. them to do a personality test for fun you know and then you have them in the room with monica there you go really this is how you guys would do it i thought it was so much more i don't know what i thought it was but wow that's just so predatory it's so yeah. planned out yeah. meant to be spontaneous well you know in, in in reality going through it and doing it it didn't feel like that was all planned because felt, you felt like you were doing your purpose right that's right and you're that's just right. doing what you need to do right 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 yeah, yeah. I, I me and alex were the talking viewpoint. about the other day how you don't mm -hmm. feel like you're manipulating them you're trying to help them get over their reactive mind and this is the that's way to do right. it that's right wow so amazing dude and that and that's that, a packed house right and it yep, literally sits one. 15 got, maybe yeah i mean you, sometimes it would go all the way back to the hallway but uh, the girl in the uh with the blonde hair she was a executive at wise in la at mm. that time i can't remember her name maybe travis remembers her name uh i want to say Teresa, but i could be wrong by the way, Marcus, you know, it's a clear giveaway. Like, I wonder why people wouldn't freak out because you can see the Dianetics books over here everywhere. Would anybody come in and comment on that when they just casually strolled in to hear some tunes? Um, I mean, usually they, they're right there. People dude. would come in and just walk right out. People would come in and maybe. Yeah, of course. Like there's it, it's kind of like I mean, I've been literally spit on for being a Scientologist. <laughs> so, yeah, of course that kind of shit can happen. And, uh, you know, HCO was literally right by the door, which is your mm -hmm. security, mm -hmm. and, um, as well as other things. It's your ethics, which is also your security. That's why John was the HCO. He's a big guy. I see. Missions downtown in, in the city. So, like, he, you know, he's tall, he's muscular. And if there was ever any problem, the window, he could see directly into the lobby if he was in his office. That's Crispin Sanford. He's a, a well-known poet. And now mm, I'm not sure cool. if he's a Scientologist. I looked him up before this broadcast and he uh, has sort of reinvented himself, but he's still a poet. And uh, he wrote, he wrote this amazing poem. That's incredibly vulgar. Um, and uh, it, it, Travis will remember, uh, remember it very well. I, and some, I looked for it. This is why I looked him up because I was looking for this poem. Um, it's it's called "Sick of uh, Sick of It All," and um, you sure he wasn't a Scientologist? He was oh, he was. No, he, oh, was. he was. Yeah, okay. and he 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 uh, actually I reached. Maybe I reached out to him uh, as one of the sort of uh, men's. What's his name? Crispin, Crispin. You said Crispin Sanford. Dude, did this guy live in? Was he homeless and living in a motor home and yes, kind of weird yes. and schizophrenic? And yes, yes. This yes. guy got his ass kicked at a Masterson party, dude. I don't I don't think you mm. were there. I mean, because I never met you, Marcus, but mm -mm. as an example, one of the parties that Danny would put on, it was mm -mm. at this house, and I went with this dude. I know this guy. He was so wow. bizarre and the ultimate Scientologist, right, Marcus? Because remember, he had notes of everything core. and he had mm -hmm. everything figured out. And dude, he's literally it drove him schizophrenic. Yeah. <laughs> and this big old fucking dude i don't know what the thing was but i just saw him run all the way like right up to him from at the top of the house and just clocked the shit out of him he had this huge shiner and he's going on all night Damn. about what the fuck and this and that and i'm gonna beat this guy's ass and <laughs> crispin ain't beating nobody's ass yeah right? i know and this guy was huge by the way i mean he clocked the crap out of him again it was like part of like the scientology parties there was always fights and shit breaking That's out it's like it just was dude that is wild so yeah he's got a uh website website and shit really yeah he's still around eh? wow he, yeah he's bald he's even more bald and yeah um, sure he shaved but he off, looks I know. he looks healthier which is good oh God. do you know if he left scientology i sure hope so but when i contacted I... him it was like 2012 
and i told him uh i started to talk and tell him like hey i'm sorry he's like wait i'm gonna stop you right there if you're contacting me wow. and you're saying that you're allied with these enemies of the church like mike render then you wow. just better hang up the phone because really? i'm gonna disconnect from you and i'm like okay Holy this girl shit. Wow. is he's still uh, a Scientologist. well he was in 2012 i okay. don't know if he still is now okay sarah castro uh and her brother nathan castro were artists in this area that we were able to get in through book lines um travis says he's still in oh geez that sucks of course he's gonna be there he's hard <sighs> hardcore dude yeah um so sarah uh was a great songwriter and singer and her brother was as well uh he wrote a song called the nintendo song is really cute and and and, and could be in any pixar film um but uh sarah was uh this was our first and only i think so c org recruit from melrose we got her to sign a c org contract in the mission uh and she obviously had some shit going on in her life for her to be doing that sign a billion year contract and all that but later her brother became a, a bitcoin millionaire and has been paying for her bridge as far oh, as God. i know and she's in austin at the austin org uh this is a front face picture uh, and that i believe might be rachel there mm -hmm. hiding her head in the looks foreground. like her I guess, in the back yeah no in the in oh the, right here i thought yeah, that looks like her in the foreground and um the uh that's the hanks a band called the hanks and they were very very popular silver lake band and uh like they just kicked major ass it was mm -hmm. a great show they put on an amazing show and there was even alcohol there believe it or not really yeah. wow they really did let their hair down <laughs> yeah and that's travis uh same time from that look other picture travis. earlier in two, year 2000 before the cult him and his wife yeah look at how Justin. happy they look and they both got out so it's a happy ending yep I was that's at a family reunion, and that's the Riverside Mission staff where all of this sort of Steiner started. ology started. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You you can't see the Steiners in there anywhere, can you? Yeah, Wayne, Tom's Wayne. right in the middle. Really? Tom's this right guy right here? That's Tom. Yeah. That's fucking Tom. Look at how young he is. This is the hippie guy that I tell you about, guys. The 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 scary hippies. Well, Tom wasn't, but his wife is. Is his wife in here, Kathy? Anywhere? Is that her um, right there, dude? Yeah, right, I think that's her right, right, next right to there. Her? i think it um, is holy shit and there's a whole bunch jim's in there I where's mean, jim at look to the top right right no you had it to the right down just to one person over from from tom there you go that's jim that's jim yep he looks so skinny there <laughs> oh and he's got hair God. and wow. he's a must got a mustache yeah that's, this was the 70s man shit. this was the mid 70s so that's a great um, picture. I got man. this picture from a guy in Clearwater when I went to the event, uh, the Leah Remini's aftermath party rap thing, uh, which one of my subscribers uh, uh, from back then, like, she was like, hey, you want to go? I'll, I'll pay for it and I'll meet you in New Orleans. Okay. I always wanted to go to Clearwater to the Mecca. Yeah. And uh, so she took me there. And uh, one of the guys who has left years ago was in this picture he that's why he has this picture he was part of he was part of the staff that was um sent to flag in order to work on the uh the fsbc the flag special briefing course which wasn't called that at the time but it was something that uh was some requirement and uh sort of a, a getting some kind of a favor from uh obtaining favor from the hubbards diane and 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 hubbard himself to uh stop attacking missions and taking their money and allowing missions to sort of survive and, and give pay tithes and license the technology so um tom and kathy and this whole crew about let's say one third of these people survived and when i say survived i mean stayed through the flag trip which lasted around eight months and uh as you can imagine was from other things that you've talked about and i've talked about a part part of the uh indoctrination process at flag 
you know, they, they went through a lot of that there. And when they came back, they started doing missions. Um, That's why they were so good, I guess, at the Ventura mission then, because the hardcore all their missions, started, all now, their missions were very successful. Affluent. Yeah. All their missions were affluent. Even if they weren't in the top top, they were always affluent. And sometimes they won the birthday game. That's a picture from uh, year 2000, New Year's Eve 2000, before the cult. Is that Travis? That's Travis and Destiny. Yeah. Yep. And look at how happy they look. So those are the pictures. <laughs> so, so, Marcus, you're sleeping out on the balcony. You finally get the thing started. Can you bring us up to the grand opening and then take us into what? when did you start to feel dissatisfied? I mean, was part of that the fact that you were working so hard? What? As you we didn't about get it, what, nearly as far as we thought we were going to get. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, we were supposed to go from the uh, open, grand opening all the way to when I leave. So, yeah, well, that's where we're at. The grand well, opening. That is, right? Yeah, but that's where we're at. And we're 55 minutes or an hour in. So, um, you can do where it, did I start? Where did I start getting uh, uh, disaffected? Affected. Mm. So, you have probably to, well, when Travis left. When Travis and Destiny left, Destiny, well, give us a timeline here first. So we have the grand opening, you 2003. Know I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and um, Destiny the big... gets Reg to come out, right? But okay. but also, I've been told by Travis's mother and my mother uh, that because uh, I'm lucky, I got more than one mom and dad. Uh, so he uh, or yeah, she said that she told destiny to go out to California and get her son out of that damn cult. Wow. <laughs> and so if that's Shit. true, destiny infiltrated Scientology and fooled everybody and got Travis the fuck out. I don't know if that's totally true. Cause I was talking to Travis today and he's going to come on and explain whether she was actually into it, whether she moved out there for him or if it was a little bit of both. I'm, I'm interested to hear all that too, you know, mm -hmm. because like there's there's still questions, but uh, when when they left is whenever I started really like cr crumbling from uh, within. And how long ago did they leave after the grand opening? Approximately how long it had been? <sighs> a few months, a few weeks. Probably, I would say probably a few months. Okay, and during that time, you're just doing the calls. You know, after you have the renos done, were you just doing the calls and whatever random shit Tom and Kathy decided you should do? Yeah, sell a lot of books. Yeah, go out, go out with Monica and sell a lot of books and walk on. Did all you just the say way. Monica again? Yeah. Okay, let me pull up the little uh, thing so go. people can drink or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Need a <laughs> sound effect for it. I know. Ba -ba. Um, yeah. So uh, some of the tar I would get targets. Uh, Jim was very active with the, uh, with, with every week, Jim was in on the, uh, Reg meetings, Wednesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. he would, he would conference in and mm. be sort of like, uh, sidelining and, and giving us, you know, tips and, and, you know, telling us what to do, but we're mm. sharing all of the information about our public with them. So, wow. um, you know, he's like, well, work this angle or do this with this person and this, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, like with Lindsay Bartleson, she needed to get on to OT3. She was stalled on OT2 and she needed to do her OT prep again and whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was something that I, that, that was just sort of randomly thrown my direction. And, uh, again, just like Rachel, right? Yeah. Just go just get like money. The, yeah. Yeah. And, and in this case, I had to go meet her at AO because it's advanced org. It's mm -hmm. where you train the OT levels. Mm -hmm. And this was an odd cycle because, um, whenever I went, Travis says he was there for six months after opening. Um, when I went to AO to meet Lindsay, it, she had already there had already been multiple stages of like breakdown of communication and disagreement like she was having severe uh cognitive dissonance with everything and the material and she was horrified of ot3 really and she had probably heard some things about ot3 you know um yeah because it's weird to be stalled <clears throat> on ot2 especially dude yeah so she was terrified and um and i was really simply told to just go BOT and make it go right. Yeah. 
And and if I I don't say that a lot because it's a trigger word for me. Make it go right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I I get the concept. But like obviously I get the concept because I made a lot of things go right. But there's a there's a certain like dread that you feel when you get told that as a staff you, member man. to make like it that. go right because if you don't make it go right, you know what you the are, are gonna, gonna be, be in fucking. Yeah, you'll be up Shit's Creek with the turd for a paddle. So um, I went and talked to her in front of AO, and she was crying. And we sat down, and I did um, acknowledgments, basically. You know, uh, acknowledged her and acknowledged her and acknowledged her, TR, whatever, acknowledge. And... Um, and I was, a, I, I, you know, I was her same age and uh, I'd never really been, I'd never tried to get one over on her. I never tried to reg her. So we were just, every time we hung out, it was just like hanging out with Rachel and, and, and the, the, the crew. So um, she had relatively neutral feelings, you know, like she wasn't, tr she wasn't going to immediately give me any sort of resistance but she was upset she was crying and we i did the scientology thing which is just you know acknowledge that it's miss emotion you know and and h-e-n-r i'm like look the h-e-n-r is normal for what you're going through and for you know i mean i'm not, i haven't done the ot level that stands for human emotion and reaction by the way right um which you're not supposed to have in scientology right well i mean it's unnecessary is, is what it is yeah it means to. you're feeling or you're back flashing yeah back flash um so she kind of cheer she kind of cheered up i was able to cheer her up somehow and 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 she was, was sort of motivated to uh you know i talked about my wins that's one thing that you do whenever you're trying to convince someone to do a, a, a particular uh course of action on the bridge talk about your wins i talked about my wins i talked about how it saved my life i talked about you know my brother and how we you know what were know you trying other. to do with her i was told to get her on ot3 did you yeah well i mean i didn't but she went back into ao and uh signed up and did ot3 and i remember that she, I, the reason i know that is not because i know and i got confirmation because i went and did the cycle and then after that they were like okay we don't need to know anymore. But when I was doing my training at pack base, I would go to the commissary to get something to eat after course. And I would see her with her briefcase and the damn chain that yeah. they attached to the briefcase. Yeah. And she would be outside just with that. And, and she looked so fucking miserable with that. Um, yeah. Um, you know, who's who I have memories of specifically with, walking around with those briefcases and looking miserable is Billy Sheehan and um, Larry Anderson from the orientation film. They look like they were dying when they were yeah. walking down Al Ron Harbor Boulevard with the mm. briefcase. I was excited as shit when I had my little CIA briefcase, mm. dude, <laughs> driving home and shit. I thought I was like James Bond and right. I, you know, cause it takes forever to get up there. So yeah. I was going home to audit off these beings and I felt amazing. I bet. I probably would have felt the same way, honestly, like if I'd have made it that far. But yeah, um, I don't know what Lindsay's trip was, dude. I mean, OT2 actually was horrible. Well, she, she up. grew up in it and, 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 uh, you know, she just, I, I feel like it was similar to you. It's like, what do you do when that's your whole life? You, you walk away from everything, your no, whole you really family, can't. your full fucking network of friends everybody in your industry she's an actress mm -hmm. like all of her people are agents or scientologists yeah yeah so, like she would have been literally walking out directly on the, the first step out would have been to the street and then they would have been like you know painting her as a drug you know they, they, they definitely not paint her in a in a in a good light yep and, and she had been on celebrity magazine and all this other yeah shit, i know so. when you get to that level now you know why people don't leave because like lindsey bartleston you know there's a lot of second and third generations where that's exactly what they have to give up if they want to walk out that door and who's willing to do that that's it's why marcus it takes something like what happened to you and yeah. me to finally make that freaking decision so yeah. since we're already going for an hour and 15 i think we can 
I think we can get to the end of this because I really want to play that song, man. Sure, sure. Can yeah. you bring us up to kind of when you started to get disgruntled, maybe what what was kind of starting to crack in your mind that led to you getting well, out? Well, Travis had left and then he had come back because they allowed me to moonlight um, after I hung myself. So Trigger warning, by the way, guys. Yeah, we Correct. gave that earlier. Okay. I just was going to give it before you said, okay. This yeah. might get dark but um those that can handle it are sure I, I mean I'll, I'll i'll go through it so okay uh the only people in the mission that i'm aware of um and, and this was a bad day i can't tell you what day it was i can't tell you how long it was after travis had left but travis uh came in had come back under um uh, kind of some you know well i'm not gonna say kind of under duress and also under the auspices of like a potential career uh, you know, a life-changing career thing with music. Um, I was in a band, uh, but you know, this, no one ever told Travis that I hung myself. Okay. So before, uh, Travis even came back, that happened. And leading up to that point, I was selling OEC volumes all over the world. I was calling every org because I was so depressed and so lazy that they couldn't even get me to, I mean, they would send me to Ventura. Then and the, after Travis uh, had left the first time, they sent me back to Ventura and I did a lot of ethics handlings. Um, and then they sent me back to Melrose and then they were like, no, you need to go back to Ventura. And then they sent me back to Melrose and no, you need to go back to Ventura. And uh, I was just this, you know, what they call in Scientology an ethics particle or a DB. Yeah, I was going to say that. And, and Marcus, were you getting in trouble? Were you not delivering the stats? Were you just getting burned out? And I wasn't doing shit. Produced? I wasn't. Just, they couldn't. Up? They couldn't tell me to do shit. Like I mean, I would, I would, I would walk just, up to people. In, I mean, with a book and be like, "Hey, the book. You want to buy it?" You just you were know, totally was, done, basically. Bleh, yeah. Shit. And they were like, no, fuck that. You need to go. You're not in front of public. Oh, you, you don't get I to see. be in front of public. You've got to go to Ventura. So I go to Ventura. They put stick me in a closet, make me sweep it, and then they make yeah. me do the floor every day, damn day with as my fingernails. As if that's going to do anything. And, uh, fuck, and even, the, even the publics were like looking down like, man, he's in trouble. Yeah, you know? that's right. We know yeah. people are in trouble. Right. And uh, then I had to go co conditions, conditions, conditions yeah. all the time. Over I kept going holes. over and over and over again. Uh, and what uh, talking about man. And when and I had been regged at a certain point to do my DRD drug rundown, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to do it because I was having like you thought that was also and, part of why you were acting the way you were acting. You just need to get on your next step on the bridge, right? Yeah, I was having what was going on really was I was in, in the midst of a psychotic episode, multiple that's psychotic episodes. That's what it sounds like. And they're, th and yeah. they, you know what they keep kept, you know, you reminded me of Marcus, like what Jason Begay said, they just keep spinning you in. They won't let you go and they keep applying the tech. And the more they apply the tech when someone's going psychotic, that's yeah. what causes them to crack. To happen. Right. And I did. I, you know, I, there was no, at no point did I ever consider like tapping any sort of resource that I had to pay for, you know, my DRD, like that's, so you didn't that was really want to do a thousand dollars. No, yeah, I know. Uh -uh. Um, but Kathy had sat me down after many people had sat me down trying to tell me that I needed services and trying to reg me mm -hmm. even Jim. I'm like, fuck you, Jim. Fuck you. Wow, you and I literally crazy. would say that to him, like because wow. you have to stop him and dead in yeah. his tracks. What would he say when you when you said that? Because I've never he, seen anybody challenge him. He would just he would keep his TRs in, and he would say, you know, something like, "Well, okay, yeah. I all got right. that. All right, yeah, man. lean back in his chair. Yep, and and he would literally pulls, just TR zero with me, and it would yeah. piss Vicky off because Vicky's like, "You need to do something," and he's yeah. like, "I'm doing everything that I can." Just Jim was the mediator that could handle everybody's h e n r as they say yeah. just lean back in the, the chair well, she was the maestro of, absolutely of that mission. It, um, wow dude this is intense man <laughs> so, so he couldn't even handle you no no and that's whenever he he was like well you're gonna deal with adam adam became my senior okay. which at that time adam was like the lowest ethics uh 
Oh, Travis says, no, he was there when that happened. Okay, well, see, okay. memory well, is fucking fallible, and I, and I do too many damn drugs. But, it's all right. When we do you guys together, we can talk about some of this stuff. Yeah, it needs to be hashed out, man. I can fucking mm -hmm. get the story straight. Because, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, what it... I, it was back. I know that it was back and forth to Melrose, back and forth to Melrose. To do and, what exactly, Marcus? To do mest work at Melrose, or to do more conditions? Like, every why time would they I send you to, to Melrose, every time I was going to Melrose, it was to be basically redeploy as an FSM. Okay. And every you time I went to Ventura, to it is, was for ethics. I see. I see. All right. And then it became. Oh, then it became at Melrose because I eventually Kathy sat me down and said, "Look." If you want to continue to 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 be a Scientologist, you you do need to go up the bridge a little, and you're going to have to make that decision and call your mom and get that money so that you can get to Jesus DRD. Christ, and so uh, what ended up happening? Mom didn't have the money, but my, yeah. my grandfather did, and, and and not much of it, but he gave me everything that he could. Eighteen thousand dollars. Eighteen thousand dollars. Please tell me you didn't give that to Scientology. Oh yeah, all of it, dude. Yeah. He gave you eighteen thousand dollars. The the drug rundown would have only been five or six thousand at the most, right? Well, I had resistive case handling as well. <laughs> Out in and all this other bullshit. <laughs> this is so absurd. Mark is talking about this. Oh my yeah. god! If only so, and the agreement oh was god. there was god. an agreement here because I was really, like I said, I didn't want to tap any of my resources. Yeah, and I said, look, Kathy, Miss Thang, you know. I will do that as long as you can guarantee and Jim will enforce and guarantee that I get my fucking services. Right. Cause you knew damn well. Just I knew damn well. As soon as I go to Melrose, they're going to yep. throw me on post. Yep. Which is exactly what happened. And, and so I started uh, and they're like, well, you need to get your stats up. I'm like, Oh, okay. I need to get my stats up. How about I do some stat pushing? After I start calling every grand. Yeah. I start calling Fuck everybody me, in the world, every organ, in the world, you got OECs. I need them. Get a, a treasury approval. You were by the OECs. Oh fuck yeah! And I was doing everything wrong, but I was getting the stats. You see, you were just fucking, fucking losing care. your mind and half pissed and half trying to fucking make Kathy wrong. Yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. Back and, and my stats are going. Duh, 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 duh. Oh wow! And uh, it worked. And they're like, "Whoa, okay, I can go." I went and started going into session with Iris and doing TRs and objectives. The first step towards the DRD. Right, right, and. uh and then I had a day where I had, I had sold so many sets of OECs. One of them I sold to Danny Masterson in 2004. Right. That's when uh, all that shit was going When down. he was in big time ethics trouble. John Rigg, same guy I talked about earlier, called mm -hmm. me. He's like, hey, uh, I got a cycle. Uh, he didn't want anything to do with it. Because now we like know Danny. why. Yeah. No, now we know why. Because well, I was having problems liability. with Carol, his mother, who's my manager, and now I know why too. It's a lot going on during 2004, 2005. Fuck that yeah, family. dude. So much. Shit, dude. So um, much makes so much more sense now. Man. So I sell like, I don't know, 40, 50 copies of, <laughs> of sets of management <laughs> series That's impressive, and dude. OECs. Well, they're Those are hard they were to rare. sell. No, yeah. they were at that time. They they're actually expensive. weren't. They were they're expensive, expensive though. That, exactly. And that was just the stat push. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my stats were going up higher than. than and than, that's all they care about. Yeah, and I mean, one month or one week, I think I had the highest GI. I'm like, yeah, fuck all of y'all. You, you had know? you were cacon for that <laughs> week, man. For that week, yeah. <laughs> for that week, exactly. <laughs> ah, until the next week comes. So, so all right. So you're getting what the fuck? What it sounds like everything's going. Fine. Everything was going okay, and then uh, so so pending me me and Travis being able to work out the time and everything because we're it's like it's so confusing still to think about it, mm -hmm. but he was definitely gone and I was definitely depressed of, mm -hmm. and, and sad about that. And, um, I was getting just enormous amounts of pressure because I had gone up stat and they're like, you got to keep going. Yep. There's no stopping to this, it's you so know, ridiculous. And, uh, and, and I had a fucking another little breakdown and this one was really intense. My vision started to vibrate <laughs> and I, I recognized it as like a major, problem that i used to have before the purif so i just went into the back corner where this back stairs come from the parking lot and i just put my head in the corner and i was shaking Damn, and, I, and i didn't want to look at anything that had patterns on it because they Shit. were just like going like 
it was like electrical it's like tripping and um and monica had come up from the back stairs and she she saw me in the corner she's like hey are you all right and i didn't respond and uh i didn't want to interrupt the flow but you said monica keep going <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> nice thank you um so she god bless her like she just gently grabbed my shoulders she said it's gonna oh be okay god dude and she slowly walked me to my desk wow and i'm just like trembling you know oh my god fucking, Marcus. The, 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 the fucking oh can't. my god you literally lost and, your mind you cracked yeah, I totally cracked, man. Oh my god, dude. And uh so uh she reported that to the ED, which was Kathy. Cr Chris. Chris. At the, yeah. At Melrose? Kathy wasn't Kathy, Kathy wasn't there at that time. She was in Baton Rouge. Okay. I remember yeah, I remember because she wasn't she had to be called. Yeah, right. So um so the only people that were there were John, Monica, Chris, Iris, and me. Okay. And uh and when she went into the ED's office, um, I got up and I went into the bookstore office. I remember there was some rope in there. And I walked into the auditing hall because the bookstore room storage is at the very end of the auditing hall. And I opened up the door and I opened up the closet door where the rope was. And because I did the conduit and I knew where everything was above the drop ceiling, I knew there was a water pipe. And so I moved that tile and I wrapped the rope around the water pipe. And I made a, a noose, well, like probably nine or ten loops. I'm supposed to do 13, but I didn't really fucking 13. Um, and then there, there was a bunch of the lecture boxes stacked up against the uh the wall all the way back to the back window and so i just stepped on those and 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 uh made sure the noose was the right height uh tied it off and put it around my neck and tightened it wow. and then i just stepped off the box and um and i and i and i was I remember feeling the weight, everything, wow. you know, my neck didn't snap, obviously, but I, I was suffocating and asphyxiating and I, and, and I remember thinking, this is, this is the way I'm going, man. Wow, like, this dude. is it. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I'm okay with it because fuck this, yeah. this life is fucked. Damn, dude. And, um, and I, and I, and I accepted it peacefully. Like I, I was going, I was passing out and I was, my, my body was panicking, but like, I was like, chill the fuck out. Oh my God. Man. I had just, I had just like cracked as we said, but like, I think this was almost like a response to like the, the, like, it's okay that you crack. This is going to be over soon. And, um, and then I, I was in and out of consciousness and then, I heard the door open and then and then I felt I didn't see but I felt this push up against my chest and I and I and then I felt myself fall into the into what felt like you know cardboard it was cardboard edges of the of the the lectures and it hurt like it was like fuck what the fuck am I uh, you know falling on and then John it was John Jones and mm -hmm. he had pulled the rope off of my neck and uh, slapped me across the face a couple times to see if I was alive. And I was still, you know, I, it, this wasn't like, uh, I wasn't anywhere close, anywhere near as close as I was to death when Irish strangled me, but it was, wow. it was still, it was, I'd say about halfway there. And uh, I was very disoriented. He gets up after he, you know, does his hero thing, which mm -hmm. he saved my life. And, um, but he grabs my arm and he just jerks me up. He's like, get the fuck up. You goddamn DB. Yeah. And then fuck. he's got me by the wrist and the, and the forearm and he opens the door and he's dragging me through the HGC hallway, the auditing hallway and just 
like purposefully just swinging my arm around and throw and i'm just being thrown into Jesus each fucking Christ, side dude. of the, the hallways and then when he we there's a, a turnstile in the hall that went around to the purif he swings me around there and i get smashed up against the wall there God damn. and and then he drags me into the ed's office he physically eight sees me with my shoulders and sits me down in the chair and he says sit down in that chair wow. and um and chris is there looking cool as a cucumber like what's going on he knew what was going on yeah and uh john said i just found this fucking db trying to drop the body in the bso room. that's what he said mm -hmm. and chris said oh okay i got that. um i yeah i got that and then okay. he picked up I mean, the phone and he pressed one button called kathy and called kathy and uh he said uh hey you need to come you need to come back to Melrose. We got a uh, something we need to handle. And uh, Kathy knew right away. Kathy knew. Kathy knew. She was like, "What?" I heard her say barely on the phone, like, bruh, 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 bruh. and he was like, "Yep, it's exactly who you think it is." And wow. and and then they made some short arrangements, and she's like, "I'll be there tomorrow." And uh, he said, "Okay, well, um, you're sleeping in the van tonight, and from now on, and um, Kathy will be here tomorrow." Uh, to do your ethics and uh, and and figure out what to do with you, and um, the next day, uh, Kathy had five hundred dollars that she gave me. She uh, had me sign some papers. I don't know what they were. Don't didn't give a fuck because it said I am released from my contract. That must have felt amazing to see that, dude. And to have the five hundred fucking dollars—that doesn't no, seem like a lot. But when you're no, on no. fucking forty dollars every, you two must have felt maybe, like. How I did you like, feel? I dude. felt rich as hell, man. And did you feel relieved because you're finally getting out of the hotel, California, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I'm in the vestibule and I'm just waiting to be escorted out because there was still more auditing and sec checking. And they she used told up, you that? Oh. Yeah. What does she tell you exactly, to... Marcus? Like when she get, she's not just going to give you five hundred and it's simple walk out the door. What did she tell you that day that you're going to have to then do? In order well, she to, said there were some leave. things that I was going to have to do, like and didn't tell you what check. it was, right? No, yeah. she said sex check. Oh, she's okay. like, obviously you're going to, and a you'll sex have check. to pay for it. Well, it's coming out of my account. Did you have money on account for that eighteen yeah. grand? Yeah, because I wasn't getting services on of the uh, yeah, TRs yeah. and DRD. So wow. um, she's going to take your money and yeah. Yeah, so eight, uh, whatever it was, seven, six to eight months of, of, of heavy interrogation and, and, and uh, mind fuckery after I'd already been fucked, you know? Yeah, no shit. And uh, so I, I was just, you know, like, uh, like Mike Render famously said, you'll write down anything. And I did. I wrote And they down made you anything. purposely write down bullshit, sexual shit that you supposedly yeah, did. Child kid, pornography stuff. Shit, right? Yeah, right. And, and, and also, as I said before, Kathy had brought that up with other public they're like just get just get his uh over to wow. to get the child porn and did, and did you get other public to say stuff bad oh about yeah you? yeah at ventura like uh like there were i think i think they got larry krogh to, to admit to child porn um i remember him and i think they that's got what they people. by the way guys that's what they do when you leave in marcus's status they always try to get child porn basically yeah, like it's like worst thing. sprinkling crack on a black dude. You sprinkle yeah. por uh, child porn on a white dude or anybody, actually. It'll work on anybody. Um, they have but, no compassion glitter. I mean, just listening to this, like, the, he, he, you know, his buddy that saved him. He wasn't a buddy. He's kind of an asshole, right, Marcus? But at least he saved your life. He's throwing him around, you know, and he's probably injured. He just he's obviously has a psychotic break, and he's just throwing him around and throws him down and says he tried to drop the body. I'd like to know how the hell she pushed one button too, by the way, and had Kathy. Cause I mean, that's how quick. Well, Kathy was, uh, Kathy put that on there on, on the Interesting. phone. Right, right. Right. So she you could know, be contacted in an emergency in, immediately. Wow. Yeah. Because some, some situations were uh, really, really fucking weird. You know, there was one time we had a girl come up in a bloody wedding dress. This is so bizarre. Wow. She was completely like, there was blood everywhere on her dress. And she was crying and she was she said she just got out of a mental institution and uh normally these people are considered psych products and we don't deal with them mm -hmm. right and we eight see them out the door we just say 
go go goodbye get out yeah but uh i was told to to handle this and handle it in a way to where it didn't cause a scene because she was like acting like she owned the place she, we didn't know big wedding dress we didn't know if she had anything with her to cut herself with but she was bloody and bleeding. she just walked in off the street yes and uh i wow. i eventually like she was schizo or something and she, she wasn't was, a scientologist right i don't think so no um or she was doing a gag i don't know but like she was talking crazy 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 and what what do you do when you talk to a, a schizo when you're a scientologist you meet them at their reality level right and so, so i start... started agreeing i'm like yeah yeah the fucking yeah this, of course, this guy is you know? pink yeah right. of course i see that elephant yeah i totally see that totally yeah um and i and i eventually got her downstairs and out the building and down the block half a block away from, away from us where you're not a liability and then no. john wrote a kr saying that i sexually abused this person no way yeah he knows that's not true can you explain well, there's not why... even any time frame that would allow for that because as soon as i got her out it was he can... came out he actually came out she got down on her knees and said thank you for saving me but all john saw was on the street it looked girl, like she was sucking your dick. Sucking my dick or something. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh my God. John knew that wasn't true, right? Can you explain yeah, the mentality? It's like PO, it's like being a prisoner of war and you're being brainwashed. People will say anything and throw yeah, he wanted people me under gone. the bus. He wanted once they me know gone. you're a DB. Yeah, he wanted me gone. He anything he could say to 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 help get me out of yep. his world and out of their world because I'm an SP and I'm a DB. And so I'm going to contaminate everything around them. Get, you know, it, it it's just, it just shows you how conditional love is in the cult. You're it's just right. like an abusive relationship. Like we talked about a million times up one day. Cause your stats are up and then down. Cause your stats are down. And as soon as you become a liability, like Marcus did, it's like, they never knew you. Not only that, that you become an enemy in mm -hmm. your eyes. When you're labeled an SP and you do what you did, you are looked down as dog shit. You would never want to bust. Right. Get out of right. here. Right. And so thusly, I felt incredibly Dude, ashamed. I'm sorry, man. I that, felt incredibly felt ashamed. Horrible. I felt like a, 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 an amoeba on the back or a parasite on the yeah. back of the organization. I felt like that you a parasite. let him down. That, exactly. I felt like I let him down. I felt like oh I almost God. cost Scientology its yeah. literal freedom to yeah. practice yeah because if that had been a dead guy in a melrose mission that would have been news and um mm -hmm. and 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 kathy pointed that out she was like you do realize if you'd have succeeded how much damage you would have done to scientology that's the only thing that they care about too right right and you would have had was, a... that was all that i cared about too honestly i know because like, you hadn't deprogrammed and you believed in the cause at this point that's how they can drive people to suicide exactly like you're describing because you didn't yeah. know you were involved in a hoax at all at this point yeah so dude i'm sorry man i can feel what you must have felt i've been in that position not as bad marcus but i know what they do to drive in that guilt when you're already feeling it shitty. went further no you know, mercy like I said, the 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 sec checking iris my auditor who you was your auditor as well yeah. she had she wasn't my auditor time. she was the girl oh. that was used to suck me into the gotcha. signing the contract gotcha she became yeah. an auditor after i left um so iris was my auditor and she had a very difficult time on my sec check. Kathy was there the whole time over. Really? It. Like yeah. not in the room. She was just no, overseeing she was, your folders. She, would, she took and... over Chris's spot at the ED's desk. Okay. Like when just I hung you. myself. Yeah. Just... When, after I hung myself, she's like, fuck y'all. What are y'all doing? You can't have people. No, I'm sitting in the ED's chair. You're doing what I say. And that's that. Wow. Follow your it's orders. Because it's serious business. What you had just done. Yeah, it's a high alert. So, uh, of course, she writes this program to, you know, uh, black to, 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 you know, to get anything that is is true or false written down in my own mm -hmm. handwriting. Um, I'm allowed to moonlight, uh, was allowed to play music, uh, was allowed to go on course, but I right. had to do my sex checking every week. And, you know, sometimes that was six to eight hour sessions. Yeah uh and you're paying for four it too, or five right? days a week i didn't know i was paying for it i did wow. at that time i didn't know i thought the sec checking would have been a, a, a complimentary service mm -hmm. since i was getting an honorable discharge is what uh kathy said which is still apparently 
I'm uh, I left the way you're supposed to. I completed my fucking routing form. They didn't give you a big tip in order to become an unsuppressive person or to fix you. They did give me a tip. They did give me a tip. The DSA of uh, CC Celebrity Center Director of Special Affairs at Celebrity Center gave me my final technical individual program. Thank you for defining um, that. Whenever I was leaving uh, California, and which was what do the St. Hill special briefing course, get up to OT8. And then no, it was actually read every book in the library, which I had owned and read it and listen to every uh, <laughs> lecture, which I owned and, and go through all of the lecture notes, which I own and do word clearing on all of them and write an essay on every single one. That's right. Including the lectures of what uh, to prove that I had a conceptual understanding of what Hubbard was talking about. And I got about halfway through it. Wow, that's kind of impressive, dude. Um, this was years. I mean, this this went on for it took me two, three years to get halfway through it. Yeah. I built the whole bookcase when I moved back to to house wow. all of this material. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, um, wow. yeah, I, uh, I I at a certain point, like you know, I just missed home. Uh, I felt like uh, I wanted to be away from Scientology. They, whenever Iris got. The real, like when they got enough of the uh, uh, of what they felt they wanted out of me to say, mm -hmm. because I was literally just saying, like I'd go in session, they over some withholds, okay, they'd fucking jack off, you know, okay, yeah, sure, okay, well, what happened, you know, well, I jacked off, you know, no, we want more information than that. Um, what were you thinking of? Who were you thinking of? Time, yeah. place, form, and event. Right. And at the same time, I was working at an internet cafe that was, you know, during a time where peer-to-peer -peer network sharing was was like viral. And, and people were downloading death videos, child pornography videos from the Mexican cartel, um, all kinds of pornography. And, and every week, you know, I mean, and Travis and I had access to everyone's screen through our little interface where we managed the Internet cafe. Mm -hmm. So we'd see things that we didn't want to see, you know, a lot of it. There was this one guy who was always watching tranny porn. And, and it's like, God damn it. Like, I, I, you have to check the screens every now and then to make sure that no one's doing anything illegal. And uh yeah, so like you see a lot of shit you don't want to see. And they got and so you to say that. They got me to say, they took those two things and they're like, well, let's combine those and say that you are into oh the child porn. and the. And did she that say that? Like, did they know they were bullshitting you? No, but no, she's like, it was let's so just much more subtle than that. That's really? why it was so difficult and took so long. Oh, I because see. Because whenever they would try to say something as brazen as that, I'm like, eh. But they would try to convince you and yeah, change your no, memory. I, I totally, right? like, at, at a certain you point. You believed it. I believed it. Yeah. This is how they change your memories, by the way, guys. Remember that Reckless Ben video where he went in and he had an accident and they changed his entire mind about what he thought when he broke his back or something? Wow. That's exactly what they do, Marcus. And it's Insane. a very real thing that you're, I know your memory was changed and you Insane. actually did believe that. Isn't yeah. it amazing that they can do that to you? Yeah, it's fucked. So, that is fuck, dude. Uh, but once they got that, I and several times Iris cried when I was like, because she would have, she's like, look, I need this from you. I need you to write it. I can't get up and leave this room until you do it. Wow. That's how Kathy was like, you know, Kathy wow. was putting the screws to Iris and, and Iris was like breaking you know, down, she breaking she's, too. she's an empathic person. She didn't yeah, want she was to very, do that. She dude. didn't want to do that to me. No way. She had helped me and my mom like work out things like, I mean, yet given, yeah, it was all a scam, but like she was helpful. She was thoughtful. She was kind and she didn't want to do this. Yeah. And, and she was crying whenever she, she, she just grabbed the paper and walked into the ED's office and tears were coming down her face. And, and she finally got it. And then that's when Kathy was like, okay, well, you're honorably discharged and you're free to go and you can practice Scientology and you wow. can go to orgs and you can go back to Baton Rouge if you want. You can do whatever you want. You're free now. And I was like, holy fucking shit. What did that feel like that moment? Um, I wanted to tell, I wanted, well, I wanted to tell some of the people that I knew that weren't Scientologists who were living in LA goodbye. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Because you weren't going to continue on, Marcus, being a Scientologist. You were going to do no. What? I was. I. I. I was. I, I mean, obviously, if I'm that to that fucking point, what you just described, like if it, if I'm that fucked up, like yeah, I'm still hanging on to it. I understand, my you know, my brother. I fucking understand. And that. um, so like, yeah, I didn't want to be a part of the organization, but I still wanted to practice all of yeah, the of indie zone shit. And uh, because I had seen it work. Yeah. And, and as we've said, these techniques actually work. Well, so, I mean, we break that down. We know. Yeah. It's not because it's Scientology. It's other things. It's just a whole. Com yeah. Combination and we don't know that. We are absolutely convinced that the shit works and we fucked up. Yeah. If the so, tech doesn't work, it's on you. Right. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 there was a friend that moved from Lake Charles to L.A. I wanted to say goodbye to her. Um, my friend Isaac Watts, I wanted to say goodbye to him. Were you allowed uh, to say goodbye to any of these people? Oh, yeah. No, once I once I once I wrote what they wanted, uh, I was free to go. I, I they had didn't my worry band. about you. They wanted to get you off. No, the because I though. gave them because, because well, not I mean, I could have gone back any time. Meaning if you had tried suicide again, they had enough on you where if you hit the news, they would say, well, this guy was so and so and so yes. and so and they break yes. out the folder shit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They just bust open the folder and say, well, look at what he wrote. Right. And uh, this oh is the kind God. of person he was. We were trying to help him, but he's a piece so of shit. So sick, dude. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I was allowed to go anywhere. I could go to CC. I could go. Wow. Actually, ties. I think I said goodbye to Jessica Sterling. I said goodbye to Rachel. I said goodbye to Hal. Um, and, what, did uh, they ask why you were leaving? Or did you no. have to explain anything? Were you told to keep no. your mouth shut when explaining? Well, I mean, as a former staff member, as a former staff member, I didn't want to create black PR. So exactly. I just said. You know, I'm going back to. Lake oh, Charles. you know, it's a cycle, and I'm. You know, Marcus, yeah, people, I got a org members would disappear, and staff member would disappear constantly. And if you yeah. ask anything, it'd be, oh, oh yeah. well, he just got transferred to another post. Right. All these people actually. Or he's died, doing a cycle now. Yeah. yeah, you'd ask right. where did they, how did they die of cancer? Where weren't they in OT8? And they'd oh, you know, uh, I, I, I and people were disappearing <laughs> constantly. Right. And I never, I never. So, put so I mean, together. it's not like they were un, not used to that. In fact, a lot of the a lot of the public yeah, that we true. served at Melrose were constantly disappointed when their quote terminals, their friends, the people that they would disappear that would disappear. They'd be like, "Where is Travis? Where is Marcus? Yeah. Where is Dominic? Where is John? Where is Sean? Where is Monica?" Like it happened to everybody at certain points. All right, points. you said it. You said it again. <laughs> Do it. All right. Yeah. So. You know, it was a moment of freedom, and then I, I uh, you know, but at the same time, dread because I'm like, you know, what in the fuck did just happen? I drove back home in a fit of of, of psychosis, I guess, and Shit, rode. Dude, you're lucky you got home. Well, uh, did you yeah. drive, or did you have somebody else? No, I you... drove. I drove the whole way by yourself. You were two... just by yourself at this point, man. Yeah, two Damn, days, dude. I went up to Ventura. I told everybody buy in Ventura. I grabbed what little really? shit I had in Ventura and packed it. Said in goodbye the... to Jim. Yeah, I said goodbye to Jim. I said goodbye to uh, Don. I said goodbye to uh, George. I said goodbye to Vicky. All everybody, all the kids. Did Jim have anything to say to you? Not really. Was everybody kind of just tight lipped and most good luck? All the executives good. were. Damn. Even Monica. Damn. Monica was just like, can't. DB. You're on your own, kid. Yeah. So, um, wow, man, that's brutal, dude. These were yeah. your best friends, man. Right. So, um, so I left from Ventura and that's from that, that was my leaving destination. So I just drove right past LA and, uh, how were you even able to drive markers without losing your keep to keep it together? Cause surely you weren't really focused too much on driving. Um, that's Cynthia. Oh, she's going to be shot for the Monica's thing. Oh, and you Cynthia, you don't have the... Hendrix the, gin. Oh, hell yeah. Since we're getting ready to close out. Cynthia, you don't have the cutie pie with you, do you? She can't hear you. I'm not, not ready. See if she has the, the dog with bring her. Bring the dog. Bring forth the creature. Can she bring her? Because I have a I have a close. I'm not shooting gin on thing. an empty stomach. Uh, what? <laughs> Pass it over the internet. I'll take it. By the way, speaking of, are you going to be able to show Lulu at all? 
Cynthia? Yeah, she's coming. She's going. To okay, uh, so let me show. And I'll, me sh- okay. I'll take a shot whenever she comes. We'll we'll all take a shot together. Marcus, everybody. you freaking deserve it after telling that. And let's <laughs> let's lighten the mood a little bit. You know, yeah. we talk about Marcus's evil dog, which you know um, looks so. Look now, how can this dog? Be doing such things as humping pillows and being rude while you guys are trying to watch television. Let me show you some clips of this absolute cutie pie. Oh, good. <laughs> I didn't it's even know that. Hilarious. I didn't even know that this dog could howl, but check out her adorable howl. This is so cute. Okay, I got to get some volume going here. Look at how cute she is, dude. I got to get the howl. Yeah, it's at the very beginning. Oh my god. Look, dude. Lulu, you're on the TV. She's, she's blind. So she can't see it. <laughs> she's so cute. That was like 2019. No, that was longer than that ago. Yeah. Okay, now apparently this is the evil side. So the angry masturbator. Lulu. The angry masturbator. I still didn't see what you guys were talking about. It looked adorable to me, but you can hear the TV in the background. And can you imagine having to deal with this every night? I mean, I do kind of feel you, brother. Yeah, no, this was night. This is. She's Terrible. just just watch. She's so. She's just being a dog. No, no, she's doing. Trigger warning that. in case you don't want to see a, a dog Julian. humping a pillow. pillow. <laughs> Can't believe we're, sh- we're sh- showing this. <laughs> oh God damn! <laughs> oh my God. This is funny. This is not. And then evil. she starts growling at it though, and she and she would bite a little the pillow weird. and growl at. Her. Listen. Oh my God. She's like, fuck you. I'm fucking you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> trying to dominate it. You were caught in the middle of the gang. Okay, that, was, that wasn't too bad. Sante, that, was, that was adorable. Everybody. Oh, wow. I don't do alcohol very much. Holy. I think that's pretty obvious. Oh. Drinking on an empty stomach. Off to Narcanon for you. You hear that? Yeah. Look yeah. at that absolute cutie pie. She's 17 years old, by the way, guys. Yeah. It's a hundred and some in dog years. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, so I uh, left it all behind, right? So um... That's a perfect place to pick it up because we have one more video to do on your story, but we're going to be doing um, subject matters in between. Perhaps the L rundowns next time. We got, I, I read a whole list, Marcus, of, of subjects to cover. Oh, the L's are fascinating. But, you know, you do come out on the other end and we are going to do post cult transformations where you're going to talk about some of the things that help you recover and how the hell did you get out of that headspace. And yeah, in the meantime, um, yeah, I guess everybody's, that's great. Everybody's getting hammered in the comments. Yay, it's just Friday. What we, just what we want to encourage. She is a cutie pie, isn't she, Emma? We had a couple of um, comments slash questions that I wanted to pull up real sure, quick, Marcus, sure, if you don't sure. mind. No, nah, don't mind. Well, I guess this is towards the viewers, but yeah, I'm wondering... Um, if I'm the only never and you're definitely not mega mega Alexandros. Um, there's a lot of people that watch apparently I'd, I'd like to know from you guys, if you don't mind, drop it in the comments. Why the hell are you interested in Scientology? Like I was thinking, I've always wondered about this, but it's such a small cult. There's other groups that have a lot more, I guess, crimes and members and devious activities. The, it only has 30,000 members. If I wasn't a Scientologist myself, I would not be interested and probably wouldn't follow this at all. So I always yeah, am curious same. as to why the hell anybody would be interested in it. Because it's all I know, you know, and all you know, too. Right, dude? You wonder yeah, that, I too, mean, right? It's cool that people are interested in it, but why? You know, one way. Why, or the why other, not follow I mean, the I, JWs or or something else? Oh, by I the way, talk I talk about any kind of abuse, like my, my childhood abuse and uh, adverse childhood experiences, and people would be interested in that. You know, it's oh, a similar thing. You know, funny you bring that up because in one of the comments the other day, um, that interview with Steve Mango, there was somebody in the comments that said that had wondered about if we suffered childhood abuse and how that led into the cult. And we sure. discussed that last time, where you don't have to be abused in order to fall into an abusive relationship like Scientology, but we can definitely discuss the childhood upbringing element oh, yeah. and how that contributes to looking for a family oh, yeah. outside of yourself. Oh you know? yeah. It's super helpful. Mm-hmm. If you're going to join a, uh, a coercive control, high control group cult, uh, it's very beneficial. If you come from a high control group family where you get yep, some you're matriarch already or up. matriarch that is matrinarch. Like, yeah. That's what they call them. The mother, the matrinarch matrinarch. That's what H. Yeah. Called, H. Patriarch. Kind of oh, I like that. It. I like that. That's cool. 
the people wanted you to be give me a hug. Oh, a hug. a hug. Oh, how adorable. Okay. I love Big you. hug. All right. Keep it mm, PG, guys. Too. Thank you. Marcus, did you get good bucks for pulling in the celebrities and shit? Hell no, he didn't. He got paid forty dollars a week, and it didn't matter. He got you know thousands of dollars from Rachel Minor, and it didn't. He didn't get to see a dime of that. He just got to survive. We pulled in. Week. We pulled in millions. I know. I don't wow. exact figure. I don't know. Wow. I know we pulled in millions at Melrose. Probably, you know, at least three million in that first year. Glitter, Possibly. have you ever fallen into a cult that you know of? Or why, why do you say that you're vulnerable? That's good that you would know that about yourself, but most people would say, I'd never fall for that. What a bunch of idiots. <laughs> I think everybody's vulnerable because, you know, yeah. how deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole? The world itself is a cult, man. It's like, you know, our mission is to find out who we are and to break all the programming, whether it's from the freaking parents, the society at large, or a really extreme version of mind control like Scientology. So we went to the best training school, at least, Marcus, you know, to sell oh, yeah. that kind of shit. And yeah. I had good training prior to as well. So like, you know, exactly. most, most of my From life have been under co coercive control. Me too, brother. So that's why I always say we should, you know, tip our hat and give her, it's okay to give ourselves a pat on the back. Anybody that gets out of this, you know, mm. because you're, especially after hearing your story, you had many opportunities to feel like a piece of shit and take your life, but God damn it. You survive friends. Yeah. When we pick it up, we're going to do, um, post, we're going to either do, well, we're going to do uh, a subject next week, but we will do to end on a positive note to finish off Marcus's series of telling his story. We're going to, um, do post cult transformations where we have a whole list of um, solutions, shall we say? We're social animals. Nothing wrong with us for reaching out. Yeah, exactly, lady. It's good to see you, by the way, my friend. Thank, thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Yeah, thanks for listening. Went an hour over, but I mean, you we know, got it done in two hours, it. dude. Yep. Yeah. I'm glad, dude. So you don't have to hopefully relive that ever again. And these videos, Marcus, even if YouTube takes them down, they'll always be immortalized on BitChute. Have a good weekend, my friends.